Hi, my name is Phil Lewis. I'm just going to walk you through the glycolysis biological example and how to uh, do everything in MATLAB and Symbiology. So, <clears throat> what we're looking at is a pathway uh, from glucose to pyruvate, as demonstrated here. And in particular, we're looking at the results of the paper by N Nielsen. Uh, which we have here if you click on the link which is looking at oscillations in that uh, reaction system and as part of publishing the paper they produced a model so if we look at the paper what they did was they measured uh, oscillations within glycolysis in an experimental system and then try to model those in a, a simulated reaction network and as part of that work they uploaded the model to the biomodels database and in this session the, our task is to download that model load it up into Symbiology and run the simulation so we can reproduce their results uh, just a quick note on what they did so they use a continuous stirred tank reactor so this uh, involved starting off with uh, all the subs, all the uh, reactants and f uh, dripping into that uh, vessel the substrates for the reaction so uh, we'll look at what those were and as the reaction proceeds they keep the amount of uh, liquid in that vessel constant by removing some fluid at the same time so you have a uh, flow into the vessel which is a stock solution of the substrate and a flow out of the vessel so that removes some of the species which are in the vessel at that time so that's what we talk about when we talk about the flow rate the speed at which uh, that occurs so our first task is to read the paper and once you've done that we want to import the model so we have a link to the biomodels page click that link and we go to the main page we're looking for the model associated with that paper <clears throat> so a quick search and if we click here we get to the abstract for the paper and links to where we could read it what we're interested in is the model so if we just have a look at the overview what we have is species involved in this uh, reaction network they set up the various reactions including uh, the, fl the details of how the species of uh, how the flow affects the species so whether they're being added to the vessel or just being removed uh, with the outflow and then there's a set of the global parameters so that is determining all the uh, speeds of the reactions and uh, if you look in the textbook we're being asked to download the SBML file which contains all that information and we're downloading the curated model so curated means that uh, someone from the website or someone has looked at this uh, file and checked that all the parameters are there, checked that it actually works and if we look at curation we can see what they did they managed to produce a plot from the paper so let's download the curated version that's going to go to my download folder and we're going to open up MATLAB and start Symbiology by just typing Symbiology at the command prompt Now what happens is the Symbiology application opens up, although I'm using the Mac version, all the windows should look the same in uh, Windows. 
If you're using later versions of MATLAB, this is 2012, things will look a little bit different. I'll be providing another video with details on uh, how that affects things. So we're asked to add the model, load model from file. Here's the file in my downloads folder and we open it. And this gives us a similar table to what we saw on the overview for, on the Biomodels website. We have details of all the reactions, details of all the species, including the initial concentrations and initial values for, or, or values for all the reaction parameters. Now I'll just draw your attention to this. So compartment, that's uh, something that means it's a global parameter which sets the volume of the compartment and there's another global parameter called flow which sets the rate that you're flowing uh, flowing through your substrate into the vessel and sort of waste products out so you're dripping in your stock solution and we're asked to then Go to the model tab and on the far left is a view option. So this is the view option here. We're going to look at the diagram. And what we are asked to do is rearrange this network so it makes more logical sense. So we've got glucose going to pyruvase. And what you'll find is this is very tricky. Well, it's quite fiddly because every uh, species node, so these are the species nodes, is connected to several reaction nodes. So we have, <coughs> uh, and every time you want to move them, you have to move them one by one if you want to get them into some sort of order. So what I recommend is uh, looking at the reaction pattern such as here, or there's a nice one on the Wikipedia site, and we see this pathway from glucose to pyruvate at many stages involving ATP and ADB so uh, I had to go at rearranging this I'm going to load one up and what I did was I tried to establish that uh, backbone, the pathway and I've moved, I moved ADP and APT out of that backbone because they sort of link into many stages of it so I'm just going to open up the one I saved earlier, so I, I'll dismiss this one, glycolysis layout. <coughs> uh, so I've also got some things that I, got all the tasks that I ran before here, let's just delete those. Go back to the model task and the diagram. And here you see I've got this backbone glucose to pyruvate, ADP and ATP up the top and I've colour coded <coughs> the flow reactions so you see uh, these grey ones are where we have both flow into or flow into the substrate and there's also a reaction where those flow out and I can see this one isn't quite the right colour let me just set that to be white <coughs> and each uh, species also some of the species gets lost in the outflow so these are the outflow reactions and I've coloured these in all white so hopefully I've added a bit of order to the order to this uh, model I can see this one's needs changing as well because I made all these ones grey <coughs> and it's a bit easier to understand what's going on uh, compared to just a, a random layout now let's see what the first task is Uh, once we've rearranged it, there's some exercises about uh, what everything represents. I'll skip over those. The next thing we need to do is simulate the model. So we're going to 
do that without changing any parameters. Click the Home tab and then the option Add Task. Choose Simulate Model from the drop down menu, which should reveal a tab task. So, uh, what I'd just like to draw your attention to you can go to the Home tab here, but this is quite a useful way to navigate to clicking on this project. That takes you to all the work you've been doing in your Symbology workspace. So you have uh, details of the models you have open, details of the tasks and details of the data you've generated. So this is uh, probably the easiest way to move between models and tasks is by clicking on project here. And you can see once we've clicked on it we're back in the home tab and I can do uh, what the textbook asks which is add task, simulate model. Uh, to get the task up though I'll have to double click on it. There we go. and uh, I've got my task tab open and the next thing that the textbook asks is for me to change the time period for the simulation so the default stop time uh, when you open it up is uh, probably 10.0 seconds and we've got to change that to, six, to a value of 600. Uh, now one of the things that MATLAB <coughs> uh, doesn't know is that the model that it's loaded is actually been set up in uh, unit time units of minutes so although it says seconds here this is actually 600 minutes we're going to simulate and uh, down here is what's going to happen after we've done the simulation so we've got generates plots after run and we're going to plot all the variables so if I click run let's see what happens Here we go. So if we compare this figure with the one in the textbook, we can see it's pretty much identical. We have all the species here and how they change. And the first task in the textbook is just to look at those different species and inspect their amplitudes and how they oscillate and how they uh, reach a steady state. So uh, an easy, a uh, useful way to do this is go into the whoops let's so go into the plot plot tools window and what you'll find is depending on how you've worked with plots in the past this might look slightly different but we have a figure palette where we can lose that for now uh, because uh, it's not uh, it's not that useful to us we have a plot browser which means we can remove different components from the plot and this is useful because the graph rescales to include all the data and by only looking at one component we get a better view of what that component's doing so let's look at glucose to begin with uh, what you find is it looks like we're reaching a steady state to at the end of those 10 hours uh, but we can't really see the fine detail of what's going on so what we can do is just change the um, we can either we can change the x-axis and let's just look at that last uh, time period so from 550 to 600 and now you can see that as that level changes here there are actually small oscillations taking place so by doing this you can uh, investigate the various shapes I recommend just changing the axis on the x-axis to maybe 500 and that lets you view those oscillations a bit more easily because you can ignore all the transient behavior that uh, appears at the start of the graph and it gives you a, a good view <coughs> and what you might find interesting is if we go back to the model you could just compare how this how the 
uh, species uh, changes as you move down the reaction path. That could be one way of uh, investigating it. Okay, so <clears throat> once you've done that, uh, the next thing is to generate the plots just with individual components. So instead of simulating the system and producing a plot with all the components, actually making the output plot just contain the things you're interested in. So in this case, ATP and NADH. So I'm going to uh, go back to my task, so project task and this time I'm going to, instead of putting all my uh, values in my plot, I'm just going to put ATP and NAD, let me check, NADH. So that's the only thing that's going to uh, be drawn on the plot at the end of this run. Click run again and here we have the plot. And what we are asked to do is just change the x-axis so you've already seen how to do this from 100 to 300. So click on the axis, just change the values in this property editor. And there we have it, this is the plot they've asked you to do. So we then have an exercise to do it for some different species. And we now move on to reproducing one of the results from the paper.